Hello and welcome to Critical Discourse. My name is Todd. I'm Kevin. And last week we took you to Louisville, Kentucky, where we saw the Pitch Night winner with a large meta uh, gazebo for Lion Square that is going to be uh, challenging and wonderful for all of us. This week we're going to be talking about Minneapolis, Minnesota. But first, a bit about Pitch Night. Pitch Night is an opportunity for five artists that are local to a region that we go to, mm -hmm. um, this one, Minneapolis. Those five artists pitch a project for a specific site at Art Prize this fall and they're given five minutes to do so. They can use five slides and they present it before a panel of five judges that are local arts professionals and uh, in many cases familiar with the artist's career and have insight into what they're presenting. So Minneapolis, that was a great night. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. And you know, Pitch Night began in 2013 at the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis. They were our first partner. Mm -hmm. so this is our fourth time going back there. Um, we love working with them. Um, and it was a blast, and the proposals just get better and better. Yeah, and it was uh, fun walking in a place where uh, there was the, the already the understanding of what the event is, yeah. how it works, and uh, seeing their excitement of, of artists that were going to be presenting that night. Um, we love the Walker Art Center. Okay, so let's let's uh, talk about the presentations. First one, Emmett Ramstad. He had a uh, proposed installation to give visitors an imaginative and relaxing experience. What's yeah, that? and this you know this is w one that. Um, it's becoming a little more common with these pitch night things where mm -hmm. uh, in, order to, in order to sort of set the mood for um, what their installation would be, uh, Emmett used some props you can you know, see in the video that he, yeah. kind of, he, he wheeled out this chair and a telephone. Um, and then he had this, um, his presentation was scripted to the point where it almost seemed a bit like a performance where yeah. he was kind of walking through what it would be like to walk into this space that's filled with chairs. I thought it was going to be phones. hypnotized. I thought it was going like, yeah. to like snap his fingers and I'd wake up and I'd be doing a chicken dance or something like that. Let's, yeah. take, let's take a look a little bit of, of Emmett's presentation. You see a sea of beige carpeting, a bank of windows, and the backs of over a dozen easy chairs. Next to the easy chairs are a small table and a telephone. You see that there's a sign next to the phone that says, welcome, please call for a personal five minute guided relaxation. This one I thought was really interesting because it's like the whole installation is about creating this effect. Like it's not so much about the visuals mm -hmm. of the chairs or the phones or anything like that. Like he's just gonna, he's gonna like, th you know, th th thrift store, find the chairs. And so their appearance is not all that important. The, what's more important is that experience of walking in there, sitting down and being um, put through this guided meditation mm -hmm. experience. The other thing I think is an important detail that he did emphasize is that the, the people that you would be calling on these phones to go through this guided relaxation, the people on the other end of the line are real Minnesota artists. Entry number two, uh, Michonne Weeks and Carolyn Swizz. Swizz. Uh, they had, they were fascinated by uh, sacredness in everyday objects, both often paint ordinary items, places, and buildings, and explore ways to incorporate spirituality into them. Uh, and in, they proposed an installation that would honor the work and, and, and work with the aesthetics of office space, arranging materials you would find in an office like floor mats, cardboard boxes, and dry erase boards to bring a sense of sacredness to the space and make it interactive for visitors. Let's take a listen to uh, Michonne and Carolyn and see uh, what they have to say about their own project. We're not trying to fight the um, kind of shabby office patina of the space. We're trying to work with it and kind of in honor it. Um, because the space has a lot of windows, Michonne and I just started, decided to start our collaboration by thinking of how we could work with them. We made drawings of tools like staplers and paper clips, and we printed them with rubber stamps onto um, plexiglass with an opaque ink. Uh, all right, so there you have it, sacred, the sacredness of everyday office objects filling that office space. And I, I don't think we mentioned that. We're, we're talking about an office space, right? That, yes. That's that's location. Yep. Um, not necessarily a specific one to a certain locale in Grand Rapids, but a kind of nondescript office space that yep. they would fill. Um, so it's not so much that Art Prize is necessarily the context, or sorry, Grand Rapids or a specific block is the context. It really right. is an office environment in the larger context yeah. of Art Prize. And um, I think those first two sort of addressed that, that yeah. really well. Yep. All right, Emily Lynch Victory, uh, former math teacher. Victory creates sy systematic rules and uses mathematical concepts as the basis of her installations. Art with math. <laughs> this, was, this was great. So, um, you know, and this one is not based so much on like uh, the office environment as much mm -hmm. as just kind of taking the space as an empty room to, right. to do with um, whatever. So, 
Yeah, so her, her project is these large abstract paintings that have to do with um, different methods of counting mm -hmm. um, and sort of mathematical patterns. And then she's also done a lot of work um, expanding that into music, into like uh, these sort of automatic music compositions that have to do with right. um, different cycles uh, with different sort of types of counting. And her, her presentation was great because she was, um, she seemed like really nervous, but also mm -hmm. just extremely... She loves math. Passionate about... She loves number about, systems. Yeah, combining um, what's just sort of weird and fascinating about math and then kind of making that uh, making art about that, and that um, I think that really connected with yeah. people. Like, really, I, really one thing that stood out for me with Emily was that it feels like her first love is not art. Her first love is math. She <laughs> loves numbers. She loves systems, and she uses contemporary art to solve a, a problem of how she can communicate that love, yeah. like in like a true, right. endearing love for it. And yeah. I think she does a great job. It for me, the the thing that really held it together was the music. Once the music happened, right. But that's sort of my thing, you know, yeah, but, yeah. but the music really spoke to me and it was really beautiful and you could really kind of pick, pick out how, uh, you know, the, the images look like with the, the piano sheet music, you're not, yeah, you know, yeah. the rolls in a, in a player piano. Yeah, totally. And then you, then you hear the music and I just thought, gosh, all of that is math and a, what a great way to communicate it. So let's hear from Emily what she had to say. There's these kind of large scale paintings that form a big wall and all of them are layers of bases. Um, number bases, so maybe the grid is base three. Um, yeah, number bases. I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna hurry it up. Here's an example. I also would ask composers to, I would make the list, I would meet with them, have a couple math talks. Um, and you can hear math. Uh, Samantha Johns, entry number four. Uh, she had a really cool project about uh, giving people free tattoos. Let's hear a little bit from Samantha of what it means to tattoo 400,000 people. The piece that I'm pitching for Art Prize is titled Free Tattoo. The public will be given tattoos free of charge. However, only three tattoos will be available to pick from. The signature of the conceptual artist, Samantha Johns. The signature of the tattoo artist, Ali Shelley. Or the words Free Tattoo. Now, I don't know if she'd tattoo 400,000 people. I don't know if that many people would, would do it, but uh, so much stuff she's, like, yeah. you know, like challenging here. Why a signature? Love, yeah, no, I love, I really love this project, and I, I'll, I won't be shy about that. I, um, and the one thing I really I like about it, there's one of the many things I like about it, is that it's, there's kind of like this built-in criticism of Art Prize um, in it, which is, which is like, uh, it's sort of this built-in walking advertisement for herself mm -hmm. um, and for her own project. Um, and then also she's interested, I think, in a much larger question about authorship and, um, and how do you, like, especially ownership of like a conceptual art project, what is there to <laughs> sign? And her, her answer to this is that yeah. she will sign your body. Do you have any tattoos? I do. Really? What is it? It just says free tattoo. <laughs> your tattoo says free tattoo. That's so meta. Okay, all right, uh, Samantha Johns, free tattoo. Moving on, our last one, Moheb Solomon, I think I'm saying that right, um, is interested in the infinite juxtapositions of Grand Rapids, bringing the, the region's history, ecology, economy, and culture into conversation with his installation. Uh, made use of the office space, wanted to fill it with um, artifacts from Michigan that would prompt you to ask a question and then uh, another another pitch that actually goes back to the telephone. There's a telephone mm -hmm. there. You can pick up the phone and ask questions. Uh, let's hear from Moheb. So uh, what is the, the goal of his installation? Um, visitors enter the office space, and first thing they hear is phones ringing. Um, and then they sort of, after exploring the cubicles and uh, the elements that are there, I think they'll be comfortable and curious enough to sit down and answer a phone call. All right, so not a guided mes meditation that, that uh, people are going to walk through, uh, like with Emmett's uh, proposal. Yeah. Uh, they are met with something that's really challenging at first visually that they have to deal with, and maybe the phone resolves that. Is that what he's going for? No, I think. Well, his his the, the phone thing was like you picked it up and you like and you heard people like narrating their experience of the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I I loved his renderings of uh, these office cubicles that are sort of filled with sand and driftwood. Um, and I think that like I would love to see. I mean, they're they're cool and kind of like funny as like you know like 
pasted together Photoshop renderings, but I would love to see um, you know, those materials in a real space. It's just yeah. not something that you think about interacting that often of like water on a desk or you know, a pile of sand leaning up against a, a cubicle wall, which we're familiar with both of those things, but you don't normally get them mm. kind of like pushing on one another like that. Yeah, and I think that that's actually like one of those, it could be a pure Michigan commercial, like the, the gimmick <laughs> of you're sitting at your desk after a weekend, you know, on the beach and, yeah, you yeah. know, a piece of driftwood falls out of your bag, you know, yeah, to yeah. bring you back. Hashtag pure Michigan, you know. Yeah. Okay, so our winner, Kevin, this, uh, uh, this uh, Pitch Night Minneapolis, we, not we, the judges decided to give the, the $5,000 cash grant and the office space location to Emily Lynch Victory. Um, with the numbers, making mm -hmm. numbers visual. Did they make the right choice, the judges? You know, I think so. I mean, this one, you know, this one was really hard to call. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've done a lot of these pitch nights. Uh, we did, you know, four this year and then um, over the last four years. But uh, sometimes I have a pretty good sense for which, yeah. what way it's going to go, like after the pitches or even after just seeing the presentations come in. Um, or the, the slides when they submit them to me. But this one, I, will, I had no idea mm -hmm. which way the judges would go. And so in that sense, I was a little surprised. Right. Um, I think it's, a, it's an awesome project, um, but it was just not an easy one to call. I'm excited to see her. She's, I, I, literally, I haven't met somebody who's just so in love with numbers. It'll be cool to see how it comes together. So there you have it. Uh, Pitch Night is brought to you by uh, Delta Airlines and 21C uh, Museum Hotels. And uh, we thank the Walker Art Center for hosting us that night and the city of Minneapolis and all the artists who presented. Uh, that's it for Pitch Night, this one. <laughs> Minneapolis. <laughs>